Bethwell Mokeli. I want to know what the prophecy is. That is the question that I'm asking right now. What is prophecy? Let's go to the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. First, God said something about Abraham. He called Abraham a prophet. Now, when it comes to prophet, a prophet is a messenger whom God sent to deliver a message from the heart of God, from the mind of God. We have so many types of prophets. So we don't have time to elaborate the whole subject. We are going to have a special teaching on this issue of prophets. But who is a prophet? How one become a prophet? And the Bible gives us a clear standard. First, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18. Ruth, help us from verse 15. Let's listen what God says about prophets. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. One you second. must listen to him. Take it one by one. The words are very weighty. They have weight. The Lord. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. So listen to what he said. The Lord your God will raise. This means prophets are raised by God himself, not by man. Mm. No one can become a prophet by power and by might. Or human no, persuasion. Yes. No one will ask God, take this man as a prophet. You can force anybody to person, to God. God is the one that prepares the vessel. God say, I will raise. Means you can't just be a prophet overnight. It's the calling of God. And now, continue. God will raise the prophet. Like me from among your own brothers, mm -hmm. you must listen to him. Mm -hmm. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when mm -hmm. you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will mm. raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth. Thank you. Take notes. And he will tell them everything I command him. I will put my words in his mouth take note of the statement god say i will put i the lord god my words in the mouth of the prophet go to jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 mean the man is not speaking his own words he's speaking the words of god himself with the same authority and power then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. God say, I have put my words in your mouth. I mean the utterances, the words spoken by the prophet is God speaking himself, not man. Second Samuel chapter 23 from verse 2. Start from verse 1. Verse 1 to 2. These are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man exalted by the Most High, the man anointed by the God of Jacob, Israel's singer of songs. The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. You hear that? The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me and his words were in my tongue. Means... The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. When the Holy Ghost comes, He will give you utterances, utterances that represent the heart and the mind of God in a certain matter. It's not man speaking. God is the one speaking through you. Now today, when you look about the world, prophets are everywhere. Everybody prophets, 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 prophets. How do we know that one is a prophet? That's the question we need to find out. Let's go to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 18. 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Let's start from verse 4. 2 Chronicles chapter 18 from verse 4. You have to go to verse 13. There was a situation in Israel when a king was going for battle for war. They will always inquire to know the mind of God concerning the issue of the battle. 
For that to happen, there was a special man called a prophet. That man is a communicator between invisible and visible world. A prophet, a man who's able to speak the mind of God in every circumstance of life. Okay, let's go. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, first seek the counsel I'm of sorry God. to disturb you. Go through verse 3. Up, up, the, the verse before. Ahab, king of Israel, asked Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied, mm -hmm. I am as you are, and my people as your people. We will join you in the war. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, first seek the counsel of the Lord. First Seek the face of God before you do anything. Before you go to battle, include God. Because it's not by your power, nor by mind, by my spirit. That's what Jehoshaphat said. What did the other one say? Ahab. So the king of Israel brought together the prophets, 400 men, and asked them, Shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead? Or Can you shall imagine we refrain? 400 prophets Ahab has in his palace and asked them, What did they say? Go, they answered, for God will give it into the king's hand. Four, 400 say, go to the battle. You have victory. God is with you. Everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. But Jehoshaphat asked, is there not a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? Take note. No. After hearing 400 people prophesying. He asked for one of the Lord. Jehoshaphat said. <laughs> he saw that something was wrong. Jehoshaphat. Listen to his heart, to his conscience. He's a king, anointed king. He saw that something was wrong. His conscience was disturbed. And he asked a funny question. He said? He said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? That's what he said. I mean, this is a fake prophet, false prophet. Is there any prophet of the Lord whom God has raised, whom God has chosen, who has the word of God? That's what he said. What did the king say? The king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There is still one man through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never <laughs> prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. There is one man, but I hate the man because he never speaks something good for me. Prophet will never speak to please people. He will speak to please God. He had 400 people that speak for selfish, classic, and material reason, but I can get the favor and to please the king. A prophet speak to please God. What is in the heart of God? What is in the mind of God? Why? What's the purpose of prophecy? Is a judgment of anything unrighteous. The prophet will expose it for the person to change and do what is right in the sight of God. Let's continue. When the, verse 12. Go to verse 12. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, as one man the other... As one man, the other prophets are predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. Can't you imagine? They said to the prophet, every prophet is prophesying good. Be like them. Speak encouragement. Speak what is good, what is nice to hear. Sweet words that please the king. That's what they said to him. What did Micah say? But Micaiah said, as surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what my God says. I can only say to you what God says, I should say. That's a real prophet. Being a prophet is speaking the mind of God. Is speaking the will of God. Is speaking in righteousness led by the Holy Spirit. Not people that come and preach sweet words to you and tell you what you want to hear. Mm. There is a purpose for everything. Now we know God is the one that raised prophet. How? Let's go to Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. And let's listen to what God said about raising prophets. Biblical prophets, standard prophets. Numbers chapter he said, 12. listen to my words. When, listen, a, mm -hmm. when a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions. I speak to him in dreams. So God is saying, if there is a prophet I raise, I will reveal myself to that prophet. I mean, a prophet must have revelation from God straight. Mm. How do you know that God has chosen you to be a prophet? How can you trust him if you don't know who sent you? Mm. If you are serving God, you are speaking on behalf of him. You must hear from him, his command, and to declare his word faithfully to those he sent you. For that to happen, you must have revelation from God, 
for your assurance that yeah, this is God. That's why a prophet is one that has the word of God with him in his mouth. It's the word of God that makes you a prophet. Nothing else. Because when God speaks, the wise listen. If a prophet speaks the word of God, everybody rejoices. Because God's word can never fall to the ground. Never. No. God say he will reveal himself through his word. And let's see, the first prophetic office we really know is Samuel. Samuel was the end of the judge, the judge and the beginning of the first prophetic office. Let's quickly go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. From verse 4. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. Mm -hmm. Continue. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Mm -hmm. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Mm -hmm. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Say it again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Samuel, a young boy, was called to the prophetic office. God came and spoke to that boy. When he heard the voice, the thought man was speaking to him. He ran to his master. Master said, I didn't call you. Why? You see, Samuel did not yet know God. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, because the word was not revealed to him. This means we can only know God by the word God speaks to us. And that word God speaks represents the heart desire of God for you and me. His purpose and his will. So a genuine prophet led by the Holy Ghost speaks by revelation of the word of God. He speaks what is in the heart of God, in the mind of God, in the present situation. Mm. This boy heard the word. He thought man was speaking to him. What happened next? God continued to call him. Go to verse 9. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went to lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling at the, as the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Speak. Your servant is listening. This means he heard from God. He has what we call a hearing heart, a hearing ministry. As he hears from God, he declares the word he heard from God. The word is revealed to him and he speak it. That's how God revealed himself to the prophet. Go to verse 19. Last verse, 19. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up and he let none of his words fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. And all Israel from Dan to Be Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. Verse 21. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. God revealed himself to Samuel through his word. So anytime you hear a prophet, mean he has the word of God, the living word spoken by the Holy Ghost on the lips of that prophet. This means man is not the one talking. The man is speaking through the expression of the Holy Spirit. That's the standard of the Bible prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. The prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, mm -hmm. but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. I mean, a prophet is not speaking his own will. He's not speaking his own thinking, his own thoughts. He's speaking the word that comes from God in the led by the power of the Holy Spirit. So now when you talk about prophecy, prophecy is not man talking, it is God talking through the Holy Ghost. When you go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, you will see the prophecy in one of the gifts the Holy Ghost gives. When the Spirit of God comes upon certain people, they begin to prophesy. I mean, they give them utterances to speak the mind of God, the will of God. But today, the question is, we mentioned many prophets in the Old Testament, and we learned that there are two types of prophets. Basically, we have general prophets that speak the mind of God, that speak the plan of God through the time, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But there are some type of prophets, a type of prophet that speak the mind of God now in the present. 
they have what they call a prophetic office that when you come to inquire God from them, they can have a hearing ministry. God can reveal to them right now his will in your life. Do prophets still exist in the New Testament? Definitely. When you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, Jesus gave the five ministries. He mentioned first apostles. Number two, prophets. All the books of the Bible came through the prophets. Without the prophets, there will be no more Bible. God revealed his plan of salvation through prophets in the different generations. Holy men spoke and took record of this Bible as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the author of the Bible in that way, in that sense. So now, if a man stands and says he is a prophet, it means the man has the revelation of God in his life. He has the anointing and the Holy Ghost is leading him. He's not the one speaking. God is the one speaking through that person. Now what's the purpose of prophecy? Can we go to Jeremiah now chapter 23? We start from verse 16. And we listen to the standard of true prophet. What God meant about prophecy. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. You hear that? God said they speak vision from their own mind. Not the word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. It's so clear. It means it's not your thought what you think or your own dream. It must be an expression, expressive expression of the word that comes from God's life. The Spirit of God will manifest the gift through his power. Not man speaking, but utterances will come from the spirit of truth, the spirit of prophecy, the Holy Spirit. And the word must come to pass. Continue. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, you they see? say no harm will come to you. That's it. Nothing bad will happen to you. All is well, all is nice. Keep on singing. Go ahead. That's fine. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Can you wait? Oh my God, read it again. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Do you know what it means? Which of these prophets stood in my presence, heard from my spirit, my mind, my word, and speak it out? That's why Elijah said, the Lord is the life before whom I stand. The prophet entered the realm of prophecy. To know God's presence is to know his power. They enter in the secret place with God, where they receive revelation, inspiration from God directly. Vision, revelation, God speaks to them clearly. Yes, Who has listened and heard his word? See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. Now go to verse 20, 27, 27 to 29. They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name. Can you imagine? But say, they think the dream they speak to themselves will cause people to forget my name. You can see the aim of prophecy is to reset your mind to God, to Christ, focus in Christ Jesus, to God's mind, God's way and God's will, and to do what is right in the sight of God. Continue. Just as my fathers forgot my name through Baal worship, let the prophet who, who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Praise the Lord. God say, you hear what he say? He who has a dream, let him speak his dream. Mm. But he who has my word, let him declare my word faithfully. What is the difference between the wheat and the chaff? I mean, what's the difference between the word of man, which are dead, and the word of God, prophetic word that have life? If man speaks, nothing happens. But if God speaks, Changes are beginning. When the Holy Spirit begins to speak to our life, changes are beginning. It means solution comes when the prophet speaks to you. Because that word can never fall to the ground. And God said, 
Is not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? What mm. does it mean? When a prophet speaks to you under the power of the Holy Ghost, your heart will break. Mm. Your heart will ring. Your heart will say, eh. mm. you can't visit that first. That's why when prophet Yeshua used to, in the church, you notice in his ministry, when it comes to mass prayer, at the end, we say there is a man there in the gallery or oh, a woman. You came from prostitute house in a hotel. Please come out. You can't go back to the hotel. You come to church, want to go back to the hotel? That is not good. That's prophecy. Because that woman, that person, and the circumstances, he's doing something that is not good in the sight of God. And that was not the will of God for her. So God wants to get that person out of bondage to come to righteousness, and God can change her life. Because the prophecy is not to condemn anybody, but to change your life, to help you. Because without the conviction of sin by the prophetic word, you will never repent. Mm. So when the word, the person concerned by the prophecy heard, hears that word, his heart, his conscience will ring immediately. He will know that you're talking about yourself. And the person will come out, moved by the Spirit of God to confess it. Yes, I am the one. And what happened? Deliverance will come, solution will come, salvation will come. That's the purpose. God said, if you have spoken my word to people, they would have changed their ways and embraced righteousness. So, prophecy in the New Testament is centered in Christ. The revelation of the Bible, of the prophetic Bible prophecy, has been fulfilled by Jesus. But in the New Testament, we, this is the raised prophet to speak his mind today. So what do you want to say? If a poor prophet come and see and see something wrong in your life, he will speak the secrets of your heart. The things that you are hiding in your heart that is destroying your life. Mm. The things that are causing the trouble in your life, they give certain hold to your life. The prophet will come and expose those things. We speak it out, what you are hiding. And you confess it and you get out of it. A prophet speaks the secret in your heart. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. Good. Verse 11. The spirit searches all things, mm -hmm. even the deep things of God. Mm -hmm. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? Mm -hmm. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Can you imagine? Holy Spirit knows your thoughts. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in the plan of God for you. He knows. That's why when you go to the read very well at home, take your time because the time is short. We will develop it in, an, in another teaching. But go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 to hear Paul's recommendation concerning the manifestation of the prophetic gift inside the church. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, from verse 25, that... That's the first chapter 14, verse 25, first Corinthians. And the secrets of his heart will be laid bare, so he will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. That is just it. What is, no, we will talk about repentance earlier, that without repentance, salvation cannot come. But some people, they are shy. They will never tell their problem in public. Some people even don't know. But if a prophet comes, true prophet for salvation and for Christ's sake, he will tell you, this you are doing is no good. He will reveal it, he will expose it, and you go on your knee. And recognize that God knows all things. Once you confess it, deliverance comes, salvation comes. The purpose of prophecy is for edification, exhortation. But it's the sword of the spirit. Mm. If a true prophet speaks, conviction will come to your heart immediately. A prophecy is not there to speak about selfish, classic, and material reason. I'm sorry. No. Prophet speaks the heart and the mind of God in your life. When the word comes, he will speak the mind of God to your life. You may not like it. He will tell you the truth that sets you free. Mm, that's the truth that will set you free. If you are the type that steals, when you come in public, you meet a prophet in his office, he will tell you, stop stealing. If you are the type that do something is good, he will tell you in a secret place. You accept it, you confess it, you will pray for you, you are delivered, and your life changed. The purpose, the Bible says, 
Prophecy, the spirit of prophecy is Holy Ghost and the testimony of Christ. If a true prophet comes, he speaks the secret of your heart. He will tell you the plan of God in your life. will point you to God's future success. And you're going to read the book of Samuel, you see the standard of a genuine prophet. People come all over Israel, from Dan to Bathsheba. They come to the prophetic office of Samuel to inquire from God. You inquire from God. And they speak the mind of God now. Direct message, specific message concerning your life, your past, your present, and your future. Now prophetic office is there. All this book of the New Testament, prophets have. We have prophets in the Bible. Men and women that prophesy led by the Spirit of God. Peter, Paul, manifest the gift of prophecy. Every go and read your Bible. So now, brother, you ask me, I want to make it short, but we promise you, we're going to have a detailed teaching on prophet, a series. But a true prophet speaks what is in the heart and the mind of God for your life, your past, your presence, and your future. If you ask me, are there still prophets today? Categorically, yes. Undoubtedly, yes. I believe with the prophet, T.B. Joshua, I, yeah, here, I can stand to tell you, a genuine prophet who speaks the truth from the heart and mind of God, when you meet him face to face in his office, he will tell you the reward of a prophet. What is the reward of a prophet? The plan of God for your life. Many people all over the world came to look for healing, to look for deliverance. We we'll tell you the real purpose of God in your life. How many people came to see him to ask for blessing? He said, "Here, you, me, I wore on them. 2002, I took my flight from Paris to Nigeria for breakthrough. The day I was leaving on Sunday, he saw me in his office. That was on the 3rd of March, 2002. Like every visitor, I enter office, looked at me, said, what are you doing, sir? I told him my job, everything I'm doing in France, say, sir, God called you for this. This, 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 this. For this to happen, you must come and serve under me. I know a prophet was speaking to me. My heart agrees absolutely. I went back. I left everything like many of us here, not only me, there are so many here. We will speak to you the plan of God, your heart will ring, conviction will come, and you follow the way of righteousness, and you become what God wants you to be. That's a true prophet. He will not tell you things on the outside to please you. He will not take you selfish, classic, and materialism. He will talk for salvation's sake, for heaven's sake, for the plan of God in your life, for deliverance, for salvation. A prophet will not come and stand you to talk about the issue of Money, all this. Real prophet will speak, will speak of uh, the treasure of your heart. So please examine every prophecy in the light of salvation and the word of God. When you meet a true prophet, he will take you to Jesus. All prophecy are centered in Christ. If there is any prophetic word that's not in line with the word of God, salvation by grace, please take that prophecy aside. Real prophecy, when he speak, the kingdom of God come. He will tell you the plan of God, the mind of God for salvation of your soul for the plan of God in your life. And when you receive it, it will come to pass. That is it. So please, next time we have time to develop it. But today, prophets did not die out with the Old Testament. Prophets are the major theme in the book of this New Testament. Genuine prophet. The problem is genuineness. Who is a prophet? Who is not a prophet? So please, to conclude this thing, we should not confuse one of the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, where somebody can prophesy in the church, and a prophetic ministry. Prophetic ministry is different. God will raise you to be a prophet. He will give you the character of a prophet, the heart of a prophet, the wisdom that goes with it. If you have prophecy, you have wisdom on how to say it and when to say it, and who to say it. God gives you inspiration, and God will tell you when to say it and how to say it. When you meet the person, you speak to the person, Holy well, Ghost will convict, and the person's life will change. Thank you. Thank you, yes, and like Racine said, we're going to go deeper into this in a separate teaching um, because it's so much to say. There's just one thing I just wanted to take from what you said, which I think is important to refresh our minds with, that um, prophecy is really speaking the living 
word of God. And that living word of God, like the Bible says, it's a, it's a, it's a hammer that will break the rock to pieces. So anything in your, in your heart which seems to resist, you know, by, by nature we're rebellious, we have stubborn hearts, but it's the word of God that can melt uh, that stubbornness in our hearts and change us, the living word of God. So when you hear that word of God uh, from the mouth of a prophet, that is what brings that change to pass. So it's not just about saying something that will come in the future. No, speaking the word of God direct into your life uh, and that word of God has the power of God to change your situation because your heart will receive it and the obstacle that you seem so big in your in your own eyes can just disappear um, under the power of the word of God. Amen. Sorry, something I want to say, very vital, I forgot. Please, there are many people that call the same prophet. We have people that call seers. Please, prophecy is in line with the word of God, with the Bible. Mm. That somebody can speak something come to pass doesn't mean the person is speaking from God's point of view. In the book of Numbers 22-23, we have Balaam. Balaam was a witch doctor. Balaam was not a prophet. He has a divination spirit. Someone moved by the spirit of divination can see in the spirit. He can foresee and tell you things and it comes to pass. But not for God's sake. That's why the book of Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 said, If you meet somebody, he prophesied to you and it comes to pass and asks you to serve other God than God, be careful. The judgment of prophecy is in line with salvation and the word of truth or the word of God. There are some people that ask you to bring money, bring sacrifice. I'm sorry, that is not prophecy. A true prophet will speak the word of God to your heart without you bringing any money, without committing any sacrifice or killing fire, whatever. That is not this. The spirit of prophecy speaks utterances in the mind of God immediately for salvation's sake and to rescue your life and to help you and change your life and connect you to your destiny. And you don't have any money to pay for that. Thank you. Amen.